What do you say to young writers who head out, you know, and start to write, and who want to write for many mediums? What do well, you say? I, in, in theater, I used to say, don't be the kind of writer who just sits in the corner and tries to protect your material. Find out how actors work. That's the most important thing I think you can do as a writer for the theater and actually for TV. Just find out how but they work. But in TV, it's all about hair and makeup. Yeah, and making when you push the... that away, you still got to talk to them, right? When you talk to them in TV, it didn't take long for actors to figure out, you know, they, they're just talking to us like we're actors. And, you know, and you actually have to encourage directors who have never worked much with actors to kind of learn how. Because TV directors, they go to the film center and wherever else they go. But wait a minute, George, so George, but wait a minute, this is, this is my fear, and I see it with actors, and I see it with young actors, and I see it with young actors going for coaching. It's as if the commercial sphere, in, in, that's too much, they say, that's too much, George, we don't want writing like that. And you do that to actors long enough, saying, well, no, 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 don't act like that. No, no, bring it back a bit. No, no, no. You actually take away the reflexes. So if you do that to a generation, I'll talk about actors, a generation of actors, they don't even know the reflexes are there. Oh, yes. So you go talk about acting, they can no longer, well, they can play the middle, you know, keyboard and uh, octave mm, and a half yeah. on the piano, but they don't know those keys exist or those keys exist. So if a writer comes along and says, but I want you to play there, it's meaningless to them. It doesn't exist. And that's the fear for me. Well, it's a good fear. It's a right fear to have. Because there, so many of them are getting... So why are you so hopeful? Well, because it's, actually you can undo that, you know? I mean, I... I I think there was an actor once in an audition who, who said, you know, with that, that bigger, smaller discussion. And bigger, I said, I don't think that's what it's about at all. I think it's about size. I think it's like, it's actually, you know, in theater, you have to kind of share and let them know. I see in, in TV, you could do all that stuff. I think the psychological turn is just let the camera find you doing it. You could do everything you want to do, but let the camera find you doing it as opposed to selling it to the, you know, letting them know. I think it's just that. And, but I don't want it. If you're upset and you feel like eating the furniture, Eat the furniture, you know, but eat it. Don't try and let me know you're eating it, you know what I mean? But if you're dealing with a, a, an acting community by that time whose idea of emotional responses is shrunken because of all the conditioning of television and you just losing your reflexes, then a George Walker comes along and he writes that kind of emotional moment. They may not have the equipment. You're like from Mars. Yeah. Who are you? It's not real. I don't believe it, George. And so it's, you start cutting off your feet, then your legs, then your knees, and we're done. Um, that's happening out there. Why are you so optimistic? That's my bottom line. Because <laughs> uh, I just think if you have the time, you spend the time with them, you can open that stuff up. That's because human beings want to express all those things, right? They don't want to come in and have all their stuff taken away from them. And many of them know that that's being taken away from them, right? They're being kind of boxed in here and stuff. I mean, I... So you got to kind of remind them of all the stuff you do with stage actors. Remember why you want to be an actor? You want to pretend to be someone else. You want to have fun. You want to play. You know, here, and I guess the big thing is not to be an asshole with them. Not to be judgmental. Not to be boxing them into, first of all, say, hi, how are you? I'm a bigger jerk than you are. <laughs> you know, I've embarrassed myself so much in public that there's nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So don't worry about it. You're with I friends. <laughs> you know? So that sort of begins how it begins. You're not here to judge. No one's going to talk about how high, tall, tall you are, what your weight, none of that stuff. You know? This is going to be who you are. I mean, I begin to you do that with actors anyway. The whole notion when you see someone thinking and thinking, you go like, hey, I said to actors, you seem to be thinking somehow that we're waiting for the real guy to show up. <laughs> That this is kind of like hypothetical casting or something, you know? That you're, you're the stand where someone is going to walk in. You're the guy. You, you got it. If you don't do it, no one else is going to do it. So you've got to just be the guy, you know, as much as you can. So, whoa, thanks. You know, thanks to me. Oh, right. I guess I was kind of doing that instead of waiting for someone else to walk into the room who can really do this part. <laughs> was that. So, no, I think, you know, you know, the life, right? So whatever, however you do with actors, you just got to do it in a generous and open way. And in TV more so, saying, you have freedom here, you know, we cast you, we know we just have a good time. But you don't have freedom to go to that part of the set because we haven't lit it. You don't have freedom no, to you walk don't. You have freedom in the moment. Door. You just have freedom. You know, you freedom, have freedom in, in that frame. In the moment, but you have freedom in the moment. And that's the other thing, though, to teach everyone else. I remember on moment we're doing something on This Is Wonderland and, and someone director was blocking in his head is all doing this stuff at this complicated scene and I said, You don't know how to block the scene? He said, Well I said, follow Michael Riley. Because <laughs> he knows how to do the scene. Just follow him. Put the camera on him and follow him and he'll do the scene. Trust the actor in other words. Okay. Trust the actor.
Okay, so I want to talk about This is Wonderland for sure. a little bit because it was for a public broadcaster. Yeah. Um, personally, it was the first bit of television drama that actually I felt like I was seeing Toronto. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen Toronto before. I've been showing pictures to Toronto mm -hmm. or, or sort of, you know, make do Toronto, but it, it's the first time I went, that's the city, that's mm -hmm. where I live. And mm -hmm. I felt that we, was on, we were on the map and we were actually doing stories about who we are. Mm -hmm. So did you go to CBC with that idea or did they approach you? Uh, people uh, wanted to work with me there, you know, us, the team. And uh, Bernie Zuckerman was a producer to me when any sold it. And uh, they liked the idea and they were very supportive creatively all through this, this time that we did it. And uh, did they ask for the whole sort of season plots and outlines and no, then you would fill in or no, you just didn't. as it went? Yeah. I, well, Bernie was able to go off and say, just don't work like that. So that was fine there, right. you know. Um, uh, the only problem I ever had with CBC about was marketing. I mean, they just did not have market it. Then when you moved, we had three seasons and three different time slots, and what was it, you know? Uh, but creatively, they were fine. I mean, they, the most they'd ever say was that there had to be so much swearing in the first segment. You know, could you look, <laughs> you could just draw them in. Right. And we go, well, maybe, maybe, you know. Um, I learned some interesting stuff about the country doing This is Wonderland, though. Um, just generally speaking. And it's hard to talk about this without, you know, but we, we had a lot of color in faces. We had a lot of different skin colors in that show. We had actors from everywhere. And we would, you know, we'd write a story about like a, a Filipino mother and we couldn't find any from the back. So we would, so I mean, Marcia Chesty, the casting director, would or, to ask all her friends to send their nannies in, you know. So that's how we found that woman. And I cast a woman who knew her lines. I mean, she was basically playing herself. If right. Mom, you know, so we had that one. And, um, but you realize that uh, when we started uh, a, a This Is Wonderland episode with a, a black actor or a black, a black family or whatever, um, it wasn't as popular. It's the only time we ever lost an audience. You know, people who came to This Is Wonderland used to lock in, basically, right, right. and stay there. We never lost them. But if we did that with a... I never. I prefer well, not I mean, to think it's the first episode wasn't the black family. No, it wasn't the first no, episode. One of the episodes was. Oh, a lot of the episodes had black actors <clears> and black <throat> right. stories in them. And if we began the episode, I'm not explaining this clearly, I think, but if we began the episode with a segment about a black family, we would lose audience. Uh, now. What does that say? Well, here's what I'm trying to think. Of. I'm worried about this. <laughs> so, well, it, it might just say to people in the prairies where the show was never popular anyway. West of Winnipeg, it just had nothing. It picked up again in Vancouver. Or m not much down east either. But, um, well, maybe just nothing to do with their lives. They'd see this black right. criminal often, or family criminal, whatever that story is going to be, and they go, well, that's not me. I, not, I don't care. I don't want to think that it's just out and out, ugly, nasty racism that we're on about, the Americans have been about, and we have our own problem with this. You know? Or it wasn't so, their version of what they thought Canada was. Yeah, it's not. You know, it's not. So... But it's Toronto is very much not like that, you know? It's like everything, right? I mean, Vancouver has its own version of it, so does Montreal, but Toronto has everything. Right? Do you think it was the color on the face, or do you think it was Toronto? Well, oh, it's Toronto. We're oh. not interested in Toronto. Well, maybe both. And it's so Toronto, right? And it's so Toronto that uh, the under, underbelly of Toronto, too, you know? Because I took uh, Inexpressible Island, David Young's play, to MTC, and the reaction was, we won't do it, it's too Toronto. Hmm. And I just about fell off my chair. There's a lot of that. Well, I think it, it could. In, in Wonderland's case, it could have been both, actually. Some combination. It's definitely not Toronto because we don't have any black people in our city, or not enough to actually notice. So it could be that. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be aggressive racism. It could just be kind of like ignorance about what's going on. But that's so much what it is in Toronto. You did sometimes feel like you were working in a different country.